In recent weeks, the realities of the climate crisis have become increasingly visible, from wildfires in California and throughout the Pacific Northwest to catastrophic flooding in Kentucky, which has killed almost 40 people. During this time, Democrats have worked to pass the Inflation Reduction Act, which includes the most important actions to address climate change that the U.S. has ever taken. The bill, which was signed into law by the president on August 16th, has been the subject of criticism worthy of a fact check. For example, Republican Senator Marsha Blackburn of Tennessee tweeted that the legislation would, quote, decrease energy production. So, is Blackburn right? Time to find out in another episode of Is This Legit? Hey guys, it's Isaac, and welcome back to Is This Legit? A series brought to you by MediaWise and PBS NewsHour Student Reporting Labs, where we fact check viral misinformation and teach you ways to do it on your own. Let's start with some background. President Biden's agenda has included massive social, fiscal, health, and climate reforms. An earlier debated bill, known as Build Back Better, included this legislation. But Democratic Senator Joe Manchin from West Virginia was a key holdout on Build Back Better. Because of this, the bill failed and a main part of the Biden agenda was derailed. Then, on July 27th, completely unexpectedly, Joe Manchin announced that he and Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer had come to a deal, the Inflation Reduction Act. There is no better way to put this. The announcement was a big deal. The agreement between Schumer and Manchin, while not as large as Build Back Better, injects $369 billion in energy and climate reform over the next decade. The largest U.S. action ever taken on climate. Now, back to the claim made by Marsha Blackburn that the bill would decrease energy production. Because Blackburn doesn't provide any evidence for her claim, I decided to check other sources. A good way to fact check something like this is to use a skill called lateral reading, a term coined by the Stanford History Education Group. Instead of reading vertically on just one page or a single source, you can open multiple tabs to see what other credible sites are saying about a topic. The key here is using key words, Google people, organizations, and buzzwords from the topic you want to verify while you're reading, then move laterally across all tabs. By doing this, I found this article from NPR, which explains that the bill invests in the creation of renewable energy infrastructure. It's always a good idea to read from more than one source. So I opened a new tab and found this article from the New York Times, which takes a deeper look at the climate provisions in the bill. The Times points out that the bill incentivizes consumers to install rooftop solar panels, by helping to lower prices and offering up to a 30% tax credit for those who do so. But the bill will not only increase clean energy, it will also facilitate more domestic energy production from fossil fuels, including oil and gas drilling, according to an article from factcheck.org. That means that the frustrations with the bill haven't just come from those on the right, but also from some on the left. Brett Hartle of the Center for Biological Diversity said the bill contains poison pills, referring to the provisions that would expedite the process of granting oil and gas leases. According to the Washington Post, this provision was agreed to in order to win the support of Joe Manchin. But let's say you want to find out even more about the Inflation Reduction Act and consider some claims about the bill from Democrats and Republicans for yourself. You can go to the website of the U.S. Congress and read it. The total bill comes to 730 pages. I guess I've found my summer reading. <laughs> anyway, this is called reading upstream. That's when you go directly to the source of a claim and check it out on your own. In this case, I'm going to show you a really quick tip for search engines to send you right to the bill. I opened a new tab, used my keywords Inflation Reduction Act in quotes to find the exact matches for the whole phrase. Then I added citecongress.gov. This will show only results from the congressional website. What do you know? The first results send us right to the text of the bill, along with other cool stuff like the Congressional Budget Office estimates of how much it's all going to cost. So maybe that's only cool to me. The bottom line here, however, is that this bill spends $369 billion to address climate change and as mentioned earlier, is the largest step the U.S. has ever taken on the climate crisis. So back to Senator Blackburn's claim that the bill decreases energy production. We write this claim not legit since there is no evidence that the bill does this and in fact does the opposite by incentivizing not only renewable energy, but also oil and gas related projects. With claims like the one made by Senator Blackburn, it's important to get out of your echo chamber and get information from a variety of reputable news sources that can provide nonpartisan information. You can do this by Googling other sources and practicing lateral reading. Well, I think that about covers it. Thanks for watching and be sure to let us know about anything you'd like us to fact check with the hashtag, is this legit? Bye. Don't compromise, be media wise.